I had, uh, I had somebody one time who was helping me with venues, and there's there's an additional category that would start with a U, like a U10 or a U8. You all know what that means? So U10, we were doing these huge scallops called U10 sea scallops, and I like to do a lot of local and Texas foods. Well, U10 means under 10 per pound. So that means right, per pound you have to have fewer than 10. So that means we're really big. Because this particular individual thought I was buying local and called them I-10 sea scallops. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you don't want to get sea scallops, uh, at least not out of Texas, off like 10. So, so that, that's how you break down the, the size for shrimp and scallops and whatnot based on the number pulls. This was the one that maybe had the... So I'm going to take a couple cuts off this one, on this tray. So that was probably the largest piece. This is going to be one of the smallest. And I'll take one off each end. Looks perfect. Good. I'm going to send this one back with Natalie. I'll cut a few more off the next one. Cut a few more off the next one. So we'll take, this is the largest one. This one had the probe thermometer in it. We only put the probe into one of them. Even though the size is dramatically different for each of these, I only need to probe one of them. And this is enough for all of y'all, so about 40, 45 folks, as well as our staff and leftovers and everything else. So there's quite a huge volume in that little steam oven. That little steam oven is the largest steam oven available on the market. So you cannot buy a larger steam oven than that one. Beef tenderloin on the whole tenderloin. It's called the butt end. We trim it off the top. When you're going grocery shopping and they cut them into steaks, you would never know why on occasion you get a tough tenderloin even though you cooked it perfectly and then the next time you get a great one and they're both from the same grocery store. That's why I'm a bigger fan of buying the whole tenderloin, ideally. You can find fairly small ones and then I know what I'm getting. Uh, other option, if you want Texas sources of beef, Hart Brand Beef, family owned company, Alec Gonzalez, uh, they've got a few ranches actually all over the state. That's Kobe if it were in Japan. 100% Aka Oshi Wagyu Beef, family owned company, great book, called Hart Brand. Called Heart Brand because it was initially physicians that invested in the company, and it actually has less cholesterol than boneless, skinless chicken breast does. So you can actually eat beef and feel pretty good about it. Another good farm, that, and y'all can buy it from them. They'll ship it, dish, you name it, and you will by uh, using a, uh, a regular grill. Okay. Natalie, when you go back there, will you get another perforated yeah. steamer insert? Okay, so that's a little tip on the meat. Here are some things that we did not do to the meat that you should do every time you cook it. We didn't let it come to room temperature first. Do y'all do that with your turkey for Thanksgiving? By well, raising hands, how many y'all let your turkey sit out on the counter for at least an hour before you go to put in the oven? Half of y'all, those of y'all that are not doing it but that are still making turkey for Thanksgiving are almost guaranteeing that you're gonna overcook the breast meat on it because that's on the outside of the turkey and it's already a drier meat I and mean, it's not as juicy as it Thank you. So what's happening is that you're drying the outside out because the center of the turkey is still plus or minus how many degrees after out of the refrigerator? One. So if I have a 34 degree turkey, by the time I get the center of the turkey to 165, that outside is way over 165. So let it come to room temp for at least one to two hours. We didn't do that with the beef. We put six whole five pound tenderloins on the griddle at one time. That would normally mean that's 30 pounds of 34 degree meat. Fry it, if you fry sage, sage, it mellows it out. A little bit of whatever your favorite cheese is. I use a small amount. It doesn't sound like it goes with stuffing, but it helps bind it together. So if you want to go the Texas route, uh, Belduisen Farms has a redneck cheddar that's awesome. Or y'all can just do like Gryere. What, what did you call that? Belt. Belduisen. 
B-L-D-H-U-I-Z-Z-E-N. The only thing I'm not positive is one Z or two. Uh, and it's called redneck cheddar. If you just type in redneck cheddar, you're the only ones you'll see. If you're only making one or two of these, so you're just serving a couple of folks, maybe you had to do the whole big casserole for Thanksgiving just so it looks like a casserole. Uh, but chefs, we don't make casseroles. That's like, you know, you're not supposed to be making a casserole after you graduate from culinary school. So we'll call it a baked dish. But if you're only doing a couple, this is great. If you're cooking for, I don't know, 50, you're gonna get more of the bullseye. You'll have less done in the center, more done on the outside, because when you put 140 degree meat on a 400 degree griddle, you start to cook it faster than 75 sure. or 30, 40 degrees. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yes, sir. Other questions? Chef Gosh, back to the mushroom, if they can't find mushroom powder because it's difficult, if you find dried mushrooms and just grind them up and put them in a jar, that's what I did. That's what you're doing in Because I couldn't find it. Yeah. You so I just ground them up. That's exactly what you're seeing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so y'all can grind up uh, dried mushrooms. Uh, I haven't tried it, but you could probably use our wolf blender yeah. for those mushrooms. Uh, and as I mentioned, that's based on a full suite. So if y'all are doing a range or a cooktop in a wall oven, that's how you will get into, plus a full-size refrigerator, that whole suite of wolf blender items, yeah? The oven is fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. What is the best combination between a range, cooktop, Yes. <laughs> this right here. That's what y'all need in that Sprouse house. Um, as y'all can tell, I'm biased. Everybody's different. Are you a fan of splats? A glass? Splats. You know the sheet, the rubber sheet that you put underneath on the oh, pan so like that? Yeah. Um, I am, but you then have to wash that. Okay. And some, I find while we use that here for cookies, yeah. I find that it's hard to get a certain smell or flavor. Like it'll tend to it'll tend to linger for a while. Okay. So um, uh, it's okay, but just parchment paper. Y'all can buy. I don't buy at the grocery store because all my cookies would be covered in parchment paper because it would roll because it comes in a roll. This is available at like a smart restaurant supply. But go in with a friend because you have to buy about 2,000 sheets. <laughs> uh, but I put it underneath my utensil divider, like a drawer. You only leave two inches of space in the front. Just pull out sheets as you need and you're not wasting space for that. So that's why I'm a big fan. Also, restaurant supply-wise, the bench scraper for cleaning the griddle, eight bucks at Acemart. Uh, 15 at Bed Bath & Beyond, 47.99 at Sonoma. <laughs> <laughs> That, or, or if y'all buy a wolf griddle, we'll give you one for free. But much like my recipes, it only works on a wolf griddle. Yeah. So that's <laughs> something else. Okay, here's what we did for the finish up. Was we sauteed the mushrooms. What did I not put on the griddle when I sauteed the mushrooms? No oh, oil. This doesn't have a non-stick surface, but I can cook very low fat if I want to. Incredibly low fat. I can fry an egg on here with no oil and it won't stick. So if you want to cook low fat, I showed you how to get a good sear with high fat, but you can also cook with very low fat if that's what your that's what your preference is. So how are you cleaning that steamer? Did you steam the shrimp? When I steep for the shrimp, I'll fill it back up with water, a couple of drops of uh, uh, soap, take it up to heat, and then drink. Mm -hmm. For a lot of things, now, here's some other items when it comes to our burners. Let's compare that. All of our gas burners, whether it's a range with gas oven, range with electric oven, range top, cook top, all of those have a dual stack burners. Flames on high, close to the pan. Low, it's further away. Okay, and we have set points going through. It's continuously variable, but we actually have points that it will stop. So let's think about this. How many of y'all, when you're adjusting the flame on your gas burner, do this to adjust it? I do. What about for rice? We almost have to there. I like to use rice as an example because it covers all the temps. We started on high, 
comes up to a boil, we add the rice, returns to a boil, and we go to low. Okay, go to low and it stops. I didn't have to go peek at it, it stopped at low. Cook it, turn it off. Well, if we're not ready to serve it in, say, five minutes, I might want to keep it warm. So then I put it on simmer. That's the same simmer that I have on the back. Okay, but let's say that's not hot enough because we're about to eat right now. I turn it up to a high simmer and it stopped there where my soup now has steady bubbles in it. So I'm not having to peak every time just to use it. You are gonna have some cinnamon on that grill, man. <laughs> Watch the alcohol dry down, add our cream, add our sugar, or you can use Texas honey if you want to do something uh, a little bit better for allergies. We'll swirl that, and once it cooks and gets thick, which will take just a few minutes, then I just turn it to that same low simmer that this bill just got charred on, and, uh, and I'll just hold it warm, and it won't scorch anymore. So those are the things that y'all have so much more control than what you do on you know, any other burner, any other manufacturers. And here's the cool thing. But I just made that sauce scent is not our highest YouTube burner. That's over here. I just wanted to show y'all, well, I wanted to scare Dan a little bit, uh, but I wanted to show y'all that you really have the control to, to flame, I don't even have it on high heat now, to do flambe sauces, or just to take a big pot of soup up to a boil very quickly. And I will mention, that it really doesn't matter about the shape of the burner if you have decent cookware. If you have a seven ply cookware, it doesn't matter if the burner's round or if it's a star or if it's a Christmas tree, you're not gonna see a big difference with decent pots. And we're doing most of our searing on the griddle anyway or on your inductor because that has totally even heat across the bottom as well. Okay, look at that, it's thickened up. Now I put it on to simmer and, uh, and we're good to go. 